So in this video, I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot a uh, sprinkler controller only using a screwdriver. Now these Pro C's, they're really cool in that if you hold down the plus, the minus, the left and the right buttons all at the same time, you'll see the screen changes. When the screen changes, you hit the plus button and it's going to send voltage through every single zone and any zone that has an error, i.e. a shorted solenoid, it's going to tell you which zone that is. So it's going to go through every single one. We have 11 zones. Now we might get a little bit of mixed reading with this because we actually have an adder zone on this controller, but it's showing zone five has an error. Now we need to figure out which zone is zone five. So to figure that out, hold down the PRG button. When the screen changes, put one minute on every single zone. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna go around the yard and you're gonna identify which zone is zone five. And the way you do that, you see which area of the yard doesn't water. So I'm gonna skip this. So I've now gone through every single zone, all 11, and the area of the yard that hasn't watered is this area here. So now you need to locate your valves. Hopefully you know where your valves are. If you don't, then either you need to rent a wire locator or call an irrigation company who do have a wire locator so they can come out and find one. In this case, I know exactly where all the valves are. They're right here. So now what I do, this is where I take my screwdriver. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through each zone and I'm gonna turn them on from the manual bleed screw, which is right next to it. You can also turn it on from the solenoid, but I like to turn it on from the manual bleed screw. So it's just a little turn there. It will leak a little bit. That will then open up the valve. And then all we need to do is just figure out which one of these four zones operates the one down there. Now this one's quite a big zone, or it's quite far away, and I got it right first go. Sometimes you don't get lucky, but if I wasn't lucky, I would just turn that one off and go to the next one. So I know that my troublesome valve is that one on the right. So I'm gonna go ahead, turn it off. Then I'm gonna to go to the front of the yard. This is where our water meter is, our double check and our isolation valve. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the isolation valve off which means we now have no water going through the sprinkler system. Now I'm gonna to go to my truck, grab myself a brand new solenoid and some wire nuts. Here are my wire nuts. And then I probably also need a pair of wire cutters too. Now I'm gonna to go to the backyard. So now I'm in the backyard. We've identified that this is zone five, our troublesome zone. So I'm just gonna completely remove the solenoid. Water may come out a little bit. However, we have turned off the isolation valve. So we shouldn't have too much. That's now out. We take our brand new solenoid and we screw this guy in. And then I'm gonna pause this while I rewire. So I've now rewired this solenoid. Now I'm gonna go back to the front yard, turn the water back on and then test it from the controller. So we're back at our isolation valve. I'm gonna turn the water back on with an easy quarter turn. I'm gonna turn it on slowly so that it doesn't damage any of the dry lines. Then we're gonna go back to the controller. We're, back at, we're now back at the controller. We're gonna do the same test we did at the beginning. So we're gonna hold down the left, right, up and down buttons all at the same time. Gonna hit the plus button. And when we did this before, it gave us an error on zone five. Let's see if it does a error on zone five again. On nine as expected, but nothing on five. The reason why we got an error on zone nine was because we've got this adder zone. So I'm not too worried about that. Well, actually zone nine, I may double check that one because that one was working a second ago, but now it's not. So maybe that's got a shorted solenoid too. So I'll double check that. But very easy way that you can check this just using a screwdriver. And of course I did use some wire cutters earlier on. And in case you're asking why or how I knew that this solenoid, there was something wrong with it, we checked at the controller and here's a multimeter test. So you can see this solenoid is showing an ohms reading of four. This is a brand new solenoid and it's showing an ohms reading of 22. So this previous solenoid, we knew that it was shorted throw it away, 
put a brand new one in nice and easy.